this is SSL Family Dad again with uh, Simple Suburban Living with an aquaponics kind of walkthrough update here. This is uh, about two months, so eight weeks we've been running the system with fish and plants in it. Um, and things are going pretty well. I'm still struggling with the same stuff I'm always struggling with, which is the pH level. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that briefly, but I'm going to do some more detailed uh, pH stuff um, probably the next episode. Um, this this time I'm going to talk a little bit more about lighting and some things that I've kind of learned about lighting and um, kind of do's and don'ts and things you can try and I'm going to continuing to kind of learn and experiment with different things so uh, we'll go over some of that here. But uh, I've got the, hopefully it don't blind you here, I've got the three grow lights up. Um, missing a few bulbs here and I'm using a, some random bulbs I had around uh, the house and this one I've got more bulbs ordered um, for this light here but these ones have mostly 6,500 6, Kelvin bulbs in them and I think I've got a couple 5,500 Kelvin bulbs in those lights as well and same over here I've got uh, I think two of the full 6,500 Kelvin bulbs in there or actually those two floodlights are also 6,500 Kelvin and then I've got a few 5,500 Kelvin bulbs in there as well um, so these are all 1,250 lumen bulbs and the 5500 Kelvin bulbs are 1600 or 1600 lumen bulbs. So they're between 1250 and 1600 lumens per per CFL bulb I have in here. Total of eight bulbs in each light, um, which they've been working very well. So besides the pH issues that I have, um, I've looked up most of this stuff online as far as what I'm seeing with like lettuce and stuff. Um, everything ends up getting these, uh, the ends of it are browning and it's almost like it dries out and at first I thought maybe the lights were too close so I raised the lights up a little bit. Um, the iceberg lettuce does really well and then like the outside leaves like this leaf here is just starting to brown on the edges and uh, you know if you leave it go for a little while it just starts to dry out on the end and this is basically nutrient lockout it's from the pH it's still at 8.1 8.2 and it's just not you know the, the plants just can't absorb enough nutrients they grow and then they start to, you know, turn color and dry out a little bit because they're just not getting what they need from the from the water, from the, the nutrients in the water. So same with the tomato plant. Um, it's been growing really well. I mean, as far as the height of it and, and it's got a pretty decent little stem on it and everything. But um, the ends just, I mean, these leaves are dead, you know, just they... It just starts to get crispy. It'll grow out a new set of leaves and they'll grow out real far and then the ends of the branches just start to get crispy and, and they start to die. So um, the broccoli plant um, back there that was doing really well, um, it's actually <laughs> because I planted it back in the corner, which I shouldn't have done when I first started the system, um, it's it's grown so dense that it's all smashed up against that pipe and against the wall and it's actually the leaves are like cracking at the bottom and stuff because it keeps growing into itself and the inside of it is like started to die so I'm probably gonna have to rip that out obviously that wasn't a good place to put it it needs a lot more space than that I may not even grow broccoli in here because it needs so much space the leaves are just huge on that thing and if I planted it literally one of those plants would cover this entire grow bed <laughs> so um, maybe two um, and so that might not be a plant that I'll continue to grow in here I may just move I may even try to move that outside and see if it picks back up but um, so the one thing that has been doing better is this this butter I think it's butter crisp lettuce and I tried some of this the other day cut it cut these off and I'm gonna probably harvest a lot of this um, this one and this one I mean these leaves are huge and this stuff is good um, it's just it's really good it's got like a buttery aftertaste to it it's it's awesome it's great for like hamburgers and chicken sandwiches and um, salads and stuff like that um, I've tried some of the romaine lettuce it's really good too so if you get the leaves here like when they're smaller like this size um, we can just you can just harvest this stuff all the time it grows so quick um, before it starts to brown um, right now it, it seems to taste really good this is all iceberg lettuce in here so it's been doing really well too it grows really quick but then once it gets to a certain size it starts to kind of limit itself um, tomato plants are, are again I've got two of these these are like a hybrid um, tomato plant this is a beefsteak tomato plant it's doing really well uh, more iceberg lettuce back here another broccoli plant which again is probably gonna end up being too big so I'll probably move those out um, the oregano is doing good I got a lot of a bunch of new growth on this now and it just smells so good. 
apple tree in here. Um, planted this out of some apples we had, and this has been doing really well. The two green pepper plants down here, they're doing really well. They're growing slowly, but they're they seem to be real hardy. I don't notice any browning of the leaves or any problems with those, so that's cool. Um, this is a cucumber plant growing very slowly. Um, over here, this is some kind of flower I got. Anyway, <laughs> I, I know I talk about this thing every video, but this thing grows better than anything in the in the whole system. It's completely green. Uh, it grows like two inches a week it seems like and it might even be getting a flower on the top so I don't really know what it is saff flower maybe um, but anyway this is my daughter wants this in her room so I'm gonna probably just take that up and move it into a little pot upstairs uh, I've got a bean plant in here this thing is growing excellent I mean the leaves are just look how green those leaves are and uh, it just blew up this has been in there for about a week I think maybe two two weeks um, Boston cucumber for pickles. I'm gonna try to let that kind of grow around in here. Another apple tree in the back. This pea is doing really well also. Um, this is gonna grow up the back there. I've got a, you can see it, it's the light adjusts here. I've got a kind of a wire mesh up the wall. So as that grows, it'll grow up. I'm probably gonna plant a couple more of those because that thing is just, I mean, that's only been in here for a couple days and it, and it took right off. Um, I threw some onions in here. We had some onions that, uh, kind of went to root on us in the in the cupboard and I'm like, yeah, well, I'll throw them in here and see what happens. Well, these things took off. They've only been in here a couple days too and they just took off. So, um, spinach, some dill in here. That's been growing fairly well. Um, the spinach seems to be doing okay so far. I haven't noticed any browning of that. It's real green. So I might plant some more of that too. These are cherry tomatoes in the back. They've been growing really well. I haven't noticed any browning on those yet, but um, still working on the pH. Um, there's a lot of carbonates in the water here. It's real hard water, so I've got, I've got to just keep working on that. And uh, um, the pH is going to slowly come down. I'm very impatient. I, I'm looking at other ways to bring it down, but I just don't think I'm going to be able to bring it down artificially. Um, I think it's a product of me not washing the rock really well. So there's some dirt and stuff like that in there that's probably, you know, acting as a carbonate. I've got hard water. Those carbonates act as buffers. And uh, I, I, brought, I brought the pH down to like 7.2 at one point, and then two days later it was back at 8. And then two days later it was back at 8.2. It's like it's just that's where it wants to be. Um, I, I've tested this rock out, the river rock. It doesn't seem to be reactive. It doesn't seem to have any like limestone or anything in it. So I think it's just the dirt that was on the rock and the hard water. And so I'm just going to wait it out. Um, but with things growing this well with a pH at 8.2, which is technically completely out of the range of what these plants should grow at. Nothing is, is will, recommended to grow above like 7.5 um, and this stuff is, is really doing fairly well. Uh, you know, I'm not able to get these tomatoes to grow too well with the um, leaves browning at the end here but uh, you know they're growing and a lot of the other plants are, are growing very well so it's just a, a matter of waiting out I guess. I don't have the last one done here but as you can see, look at all that sediment in there. And this is why I haven't finished this one. I've actually, there's some fish aquarium rock in there I threw in there the other day. But uh, look at all the, the, the fish waste and, and sediment that's in this, this uh, last. I just let this one run. I have the water turned off right now so it's not too loud. But I let this one run all the time. And, um, you know, just kind of as a trap for this extra dirt uh, in, the, in the water, the extra waste in the water. So... I need to put one of those uh, radio flow filters in here, uh, a swirl filter, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to design one and put that in as soon as I can because I don't. This is all going to end up in all the grow beds, and it's just going to clog these things up. So, um, you know, the other grow beds are getting a lot of this too. But since this one's at the end, it seems to filter out the most of the waste. It all kind of floats down to the end, and then I open this valve up, and it all comes out. So, but anyway. Um, Lighting has been key. Uh, I took out all of the 3500 Kelvin lights that I had in here. I had some 5000, I think I had some 3500 Kelvin, some 3000 Kelvin lights in here. I took all those bulbs out and I have only 6500 Kelvin in here now and some 5500 Kelvin. I'm going to replace the 5500s with 65s as well. Um, and I'll talk to you a little bit about uh, lights. I, I just, um, I've got a few uh, things that will show you here um, about the different types of bulbs and what you should choose. Um, I also recommend that, um, uh, you know, I still recommend using CFL lights and these grow lights have been awesome. 
but uh, there is definitely, you, you want to use the right types of bulbs. So um, I'll talk a little bit about that and then we'll come and uh, finish up here. All right, so when we're talking about using fluorescent lights to grow plants indoors, um, I've done a lot of research and watched a lot of other YouTube videos and looked up a lot of different things online. Um, and I've got a lot of kind of conflicting information. So I just wanted to go through kind of what I've learned and use it, just a couple quick resources online here to back this up. Um, but basically, a lot of people were saying that they're in their grow lights, they used a full spectrum of lights. And so everyone talked about having this full spectrum of light so that you capture all of the wavelengths or temperatures of light that come from the sun. Um, so you're trying to mimic the outdoor, you know, sun. Um, but actually, and so I tried to mimic that. I thought that was the, the best way. I understand that the, you know, the, the higher or the, the spectrum of light towards the blue um, is for your higher growth. You know, the, the photosynthesis is going to spur a growth in that plant. And um, and then your, your wavelengths or your color temperature is closer to like 2700 Kelvin, closer, closer to the red or orange scale of light. Um, that's going to spur more... Uh, flowering of, of flowering type plants. So I understood that, but I also read in a lot of places that you want to have all spectrums of light and all color temperatures. And so I tried to include, you know, some 2700 Kelvin bulbs and some 3000 and some 4000 and 5000 and 6000 or 6500 Kelvin bulbs, so a, ver a whole variety of these fluorescent CFLs in my grow lights. I found out that's not really important. And uh, what is really important is this, and this is how photosynthesis is going to work. So essentially this is a very simple diagram, but you have your wavelength that is blue towards the blue spectrum, which is, this is your 6500 Kelvin lights, your daylight uh, lights, your grow lights, your T5s, that kind of stuff. These fluorescents are 6500 Kelvin generally. This is absorbed and by chlorophyll and photosynthesizes and, and you know helps grow your plants. The light in the middle in the green spectrum is reflected and it's actually not absorbed at all and it doesn't really do anything for your plants. On the red end of the spectrum on, on your and again in, in t uh, color temperatures this is a 2700 Kelvin and below temperature of light. This is your standard incandescent type bulbs, the old style yellowish kind of hue bulbs or most of your CFL bulbs that you use inside your regular lights around your house today. Um, 2700 Kelvin, a lot of them are 3500 Kelvin. Um, you want the closer to the red spectrum, the 2700 Kelvin. Um, without going into a different type of lighting system, sodium lights or other types of lights, you're not going to get uh, uh, much closer than 2700 Kelvin to this red spectrum here, orange spectrum. This absorbs and the chlorophyll again photosynthesizes that and use you know that that photosynthesis can take place with that light. So the point here is that you don't really need anything in between the 6500 Kelvin and the 2700 Kelvin lights that you're going to put in your light fixtures. You don't need anything in between. It's not going to do you any good whatsoever. Um, another resource here, another little picture here. This kind of shows that photosynthesis or the chlorophyll absorbs the the light in your visible light spectrum here these are this is in nanometers so this doesn't uh, this doesn't apply to light bulbs but um, basically your 2700 Kelvin bulbs are over here in this this part of the spectrum right here okay the closer you can get towards the red you see how the efficiency of the plant to use that light that's where the efficiency goes up, okay? Right here, I had a bunch of 3,500 Kelvin bulbs in my in my system. There's almost nothing, no benefit at all to that to that spectrum of light. And then over here in your blue spectrum, you know, your your 6,500 Kelvin lights are somewhere in here. So this is uh, you know helps to get up in in uh, uh, where it's most efficient for those plants to use that that light. So. I think that's important to understand. Um, also, uh, just this to kind of help convert, because there's a lot of terminology thrown around with lights. Lights are not measured in watts, okay? Watts are have nothing to do with the amount of light you're getting out of a bulb, absolutely zero. Watt, wattage and watts are a measurement of energy. They measure how much energy a bulb is using, electricity, energy, that has nothing to do with how much light they produce. LED bulbs use 
maybe 3 watts to produce the same amount of light that a 60 watt, uh, the old incandescent 60 watt bulbs, you know, uh, um, could produce. So the amount of light you get out of the bulb has nothing to do with the amount of watts it's using. Um, you, the more efficient a bulb is at turning the energy or electricity into light, the better the bulb, right? That's what LEDs are. Of course, they're more expensive, but they are the most efficient at turning the energy electricity into light. So uh, when we're talking about lights, wattage is not relevant here. What we want to talk about is the color temperature, which is measured in kelvins, and also the intensity of the light, which is measured in lumens. So those are the only two important things when you're looking at CFL bulbs, what to pick. So here this kind of shows you um, you know, what we're looking at 6500 Kelvin right here in the middle, that's the bulbs that we're using now, are up in this range. Some are 5500 Kelvin I still have in my light system just because they're cheaper and I haven't replaced all of them yet, but they're in this spectrum of blue light. Um, sorry, right here. Um, I'm not following the line down. 6500 Kelvin is over here. On this side it's over here and it's following down right here, okay? so. And then on the other end of it, your 2700 Kelvin light bulbs, and this is like your old incandescence, this is that yellowish kind of hue that you get, that's over here in the spectrum, okay? So at this end of the spectrum, and at this end of the spectrum is where your photosynthesis takes place in your plants. So this is important to know. Don't go waste your money on a bunch of in-between bulbs, 5500 and 4500 and 3500 Kelvin bulbs and all that good stuff. Just get the most powerful amount of lumens that you can afford to get in the 6500 Kelvin range and in the 2700 Kelvin range. For CFLs that's about as far you know in either direction that you're gonna find. If you wanna spend more money and get into other types of, of grow lights they they're a lot more expensive they produce more heat I, I, I'm not necessarily um, I necessarily don't think it's worth it for this uh, indoor growth that we're doing here for vegetables so um, so just keep that in mind when you're picking out bulbs for your lights and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just take a final look at the system here and, and uh, what we've got and some other changes that I've made with the lights to um, help things grow differently. So there's lots of adjustments you can make and we'll uh, go over some of those now. All right, so the only other thing to, to really mention about lighting here is the height of the light definitely matters. Now, most people said with CFLs and fluorescent lights and that, you can put them right down on top of the plants because they're not that hot. But there's some there's some warmth under here. So I, I move this up, and what's going to happen, how, how you can adjust your lights. Um, this one I have up a little bit higher here. This one I have up the highest, and then this one's the lowest. And basically what happens, you move the light up higher, and your plants are gonna get leggy. They're gonna grow up towards that light a little bit faster. Um, you keep the light down a little bit lower and the plants are gonna get a little bit more astute. They're just gonna have you know, thicker stems and, and greener leaves and that. Um, you can see everything kind of leaning in towards the light here and that's basically what's going on. So um, I moved this light up about six inches and that tomato plant literally grew up like six inches in a week. So now it's kind of stopped a little bit. I'll let it wait here for another week or so and then I'll raise the light up again and I'm gonna end up having to put some supports in for it I think soon but um, only other thing I did to the system differently was I put this little T in here coming up from the pump and uh, the, the basically this just allows me to open this up and it goes down and it goes around the corner here on the floor and it goes into this little drain I have on the floor over here um, if I ever need to pump some water out of the system or flush this sump tank out, like if I'm cleaning the beds or moving things around and it gets dirty or full of, full of um, sediment or anything like that in here, which you can see there's some in there right now, it's kind of brownish, but uh, I can open this up and then close the valve at the top here and it'll just pump the water right out to the drain. Um, so it just makes an easy way to, to drain it out. I also am going to put uh, down at this end, I got another stub pipe coming up that goes down to a drain that goes all the way down to that same drain. Um, this eventually will be connected to uh, this over here and so I can flush this pipe out with all that sediment that ends up in the bottom of it. I can flush it right out to the drain every once in a while. So, But that's pretty much the update. Um, next time I'll do an update it'll be more on uh, um, the pH 
And I'm going to experiment with a few things. So I'm going to test the nitrification efficiency at a few different temperatures. And I'm also going to test the nitrification effect that different types of uh, pH lowering agents have on, because I've heard that like lemon juice and vinegar is a bad idea because it kills bacteria and stuff and your nitrification is not going to work. I'm going to just play around a little bit because I'm getting impatient <laughs> and just see what I can do with the pH, uh, mess with it a little bit. The goldfish are hardy enough to take it. They don't seem to really care fluctuations. It went all the way down to, you know, 7.2 up to 8 and they all were just jumping around in there happy as ever. So, um, Anyway, I will uh, keep you guys updated, and we'll, in about two weeks we'll have another update on it. So throw some comments in if you have anything to, to add, or uh, if I made any mistakes, correct me, please. Uh, anything to share with other viewers, please throw those in the comment section. Like the video, I do appreciate that as well. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep seeing the updates. Um, we've got some other plans. We might even do a greenhouse outside uh, in the yard here and do a smaller aquaponics out there uh, later in the year or even next year. But uh, we're going to continue on and expand this one, and um, we'll keep you updated. So thanks for watching, and have a good one.